Welcome to our second video in our series Bible Insights for your life of faith. Have you ever wondered if your life has purpose or wondered where you might be going? The reality is that each one of us has a call from God and so tonight we're going to look at his call and his purpose for our lives. As we look at his call, one of the first places that it's worthwhile picking up is how Jesus actually spoke, how he called his first disciples. And so we pick those up in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Come, follow me, said Jesus. And immediately they followed. The first part of calling is Jesus is speaking to each of us. You may wonder why you're even listening to this video at this moment. The reality is God has called you to spend this time because God is at work in your life. God is speaking. And when God speaks, people recognize his voice. The minute that the disciples heard Jesus' voice, come follow me. They left their nets and they followed. It was a massive change of life. It was a lifestyle that meant each and every day they would follow Jesus to the very end. Jesus called them what to do to make them fishers of people, to enable them to encourage people to have a life with God. And as you go through the Gospels, you see Jesus teaching them in prayer teaching them about the scriptures, teaching them about God and what he says, teaching them how to follow, for he is calling them. And the reality is that for each of us, we have that calling from God, a calling to be his disciples, a calling to pick up our cross and follow him, a calling to follow in God's way, in God's time, in God's direction, all of us have that general call, and we can see that throughout scriptures. But did you know that not only do we have that general call to follow Jesus, just as those disciples, we have a specific call for our lives. The question really is, what does God want to do in and through you? And so to give us a piece of insight into this, we're now going to turn to Exodus chapter three and the story of Moses. Moses has just been distracted. He's seen something in the distance and he comes up and realizes it's a bush. It's a bush burning, but not being burnt up. And from this bush, God speaks. And so let's pick up the story in verse four. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him, him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Just note that as Moses hears God's voice, he just says, here I am. Here I am available to listen. And this is what God says to Moses in that moment. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them out from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, 
I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Moses saw three things. The first thing he saw is a vision of God. I am your God. I am the father of Abraham, of Isaac. Immediately in Moses' mind, the story of the people of God welled up and all God's actions, all God's provision, all God's saving acts appeared. And so the first thing for us knowing what God's call on our lives is, is to have that vision of God, an all-consuming vision of God, one that fills our lives and ones that draws us deeper and deeper into an encounter with him, deeper and deeper into his plans and purposes and who he is. Moses immediately slightly hid because he was wary. Because of Jesus, we can come close and follow that voice and call of God. So the first thing for Moses and you and me is to have a vision of God that is fueled from scripture, fueled from history, fueled from how God works, a God that's worthy of our worship and a God that is worthy of us laying down our lives to follow him. For he first laid down his life for us in Jesus. But the second thing is that actually there is a vision given for God's people, a vision given for the kingdom of God. In this story, you can see how clearly God just looks down and he sees the suffering of his people there in slavery. And God has a different plan and purpose, a plan to bring them out of slavery to a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a transforming vision. It's a vision of the kingdom of something to be changed, of something to happen, of something to be different. It might be for us a change in the way we work or our workplace. It might be an issue of justice in our society. It might be an issue of serving the poor. It might be an issue of just bringing his kingdom in healing. It might be an issue to do with any part of our lives. But it's looking for the action of God, what God is wanting to do to bring his people and bring his salvation and bring change from one state to another. So Moses, first of all, has a vision of God. And the second thing he does is has a vision for God's people and a vision for the kingdom of God and the way things could be different. And the third thing that then happens is really almost revealing to Moses and can be transforming to us. For God says to Moses, and now you go, go and tell Pharaoh. You see, you've seen a picture of me. You've seen a picture of what needs to be done. You've got a heart for that change. But now I'm sending you. You have a part to play. And for each of us as Christians, as we get that vision of God, as we get that vision for the kingdom and the vision for his people, God is saying, now I'm sending you. There is a unique call on your life, just as in Moses' life. If Moses hadn't followed, the people of God wouldn't have been set free. The reality is there's a unique call on your life. As I said earlier, because you're listening to this, God is already at work in your life. And because God is at work, there is something he's wanting to do in and through you. In the youth group that I used to run years ago, people often used to talk to about WWJD. What would Jesus do? We used to think about it and think how to follow. But I really think it went far deeper than that. It wasn't about just what Jesus would do. It was actually what would Jesus do in and through me, in and through you, in the way that he has gifted and the way that he has made you, in your uniqueness. You see, scripture is really clear. If you weren't here, the people of God would miss out. God has something just for you to do. It may be many things over a lifetime. It may be a few. But if God has uniquely shaped you, he's uniquely created you. The question that we have is really simple. What would God do in and through you with your time? with your talents, with your abilities, with your opportunities, with the vision of God that you've seen, the vision for his people that you've seen, the vision of the kingdom that you've seen. How is God asking you to be involved? How is God calling you to do something? For Moses, it was unique. He had others that supported him and others around, and the people of God played different roles while all of that was happening. 
is the same for each of us as we hear that call. What would God do in and through you this day? We started with Jesus calling his disciples and Jesus is calling you, calling you to generally follow. But the reality is in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, it tells us that God has already prepared some great things for each of us to do. Why don't you enjoy finding out more of God's call on your life? And next week, we're going to be spending time finding out more about how we hear God's voice so we can be even clearer on his call in our lives.